Good morning, Zeo here. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you should go ahead and do that now. Yes? No? Come on. Don't leave me hanging. Anyway, this morning we are going to talk about GeForce Now and how it has just sort of shown how greedy some developers are. So let's get into it, shall we? Whether it's just from uh, misinformation or not properly understanding what exactly GeForce Now is, or maybe it's just scathing articles like this that paint it into a um, different light than what it is. Here we've got Vice with an article. Some developers don't know their games are streaming on GeForce Now. <gasps> the horror! Oh, seriously. What? <laughs> Um, but anyway, why I say that some of this might be due to pure ignorance is just based on some of the comments said by said one of the developers, uh, specifically the developer of The Lone Dark. I don't think they understand exactly what GeForce Now is. And um, meanwhile, other developers, they're just greedy. <laughs> I mean, it, it just seems that way, considering when you're talking about, say, what Bethesda did when it came to it. But anyway, if you don't understand what GeForce Now is, I did do a video or two or something about it. And when we were talking about Activision Blizzards pulling out and changing their EULA to reflect that you're not allowed to use any kind of remote play service in their games, or you will suffer a ban from their thing. And they also ban people for using GeForce Now when they found out that it was being remote played from you know, their thing from doing other thing, even though they own the game. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, if you want to check that out, I did do a video on that. But what exactly is GeForce Now? GeForce Now is a streaming service, not a normal streaming service that you would think Netflix or Hulu. Um, when it comes down to it, we've got currently three um, decent, uh, you know, streaming game services not really sure what what we're calling that anyway you've got stadia which you know you've got to pay for you can get the free version um when they finally launch that if they hadn't already um i hadn't looked back into it they might have already launched it but you then have to pay for the games individually and as long as that service of course is active you have access to those games on a few devices whether it's the pixel phone or anywhere the Chromecast happens to be connected to, or if you've got correct browser or whatever, you can stream your games, essentially. And the, the service still isn't that great. Then you have Xbox X Cloud, which is more Netflix-esque style of streaming service where you pay for the product and you get access to a library of games that you can essentially stream to wherever. Um, as well as a few other things that come with it, which is pretty nice as well. Uh, that's probably the one that is the most enticing is to pay, you know, a monthly fee and have an access to a library of games that you normally don't have. Then you have GeForce Now. GeForce Now took a different approach in where they don't offer you anything game-wise. Um, unlike the other two, they don't offer games which is why the title to this is so um, scathing, I guess. It, it, it's misleading, highly misleading, because uh, the way GeForce Now goes, it takes your current library of games on things like Epic and Steam and allows you to play them in other locations, whether it be, say, your phone or your smart TV or your parents' smart TV, or that really bad laptop that you hang around to and only take with you when you just want to browse the internet because you've got nothing better to do or something. You know, it's a very nice and enticing product in the way of, you know, maybe you're going to see the family for the week because it's the holidays or whatever, but you don't want to bring your entire rig with you to do that. 
you can use GeForce Now to still have access to your games, take the crappy laptop you've got in the corner with you so it's much more easier, much more portable, um, and be able to play your games via that using their service. So essentially all you're doing is renting a PC from them, a virtual PC, and you're playing your games using remote play. Not bad at all, right? And it's not exactly like super expensive either. I think they were currently toying with a price tag of $4.99 a month or something like that. Uh, said it will, of course, probably increase as more things are done. You know, it's not that bad. But when you get a title like this, of course, some developers don't know their games are on streaming or are streaming on GeForce Now. It makes it sound like GeForce Now is offering you games for their service. You you pay the thing and then you honest, then you automatically have access to, for example, the Lone Dark without paying for it. And that's not the case. You would have to first buy the Lone Dark in a particular location like Steam or Epic, and then you were capable of playing it through their service. But you, you know, the developer hasn't lost anything at all. So let, let's let's go down here. Um but the Lone Dark game director, Ralph Van Leroop, 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 I, I'm not going to say that, uh, Raphael, we'll go with Raphael, how's that, um, said that NVIDIA didn't ask permission for the Long Dark to appear and said devs should control their games where they exist. <clears throat> yeah, you're right, devs should control their games where they exist. Problem is, what NVIDIA is doing is not taking your game and making it exist on their product. All they're doing is allowing people to play it from where they exist, i.e., for example, say Steam, and allowing them to play their Steam game in the living room, or at their parents, or at their boyfriends, or wherever else they happen to be. That's it. This is where I say I feel like there's a lot of ignorance when it comes to GeForce Now and some developers is because, no offense, Raphael, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it sounds to me that somebody came up to you and said, it was like, hey, 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 did you know GeForce Now is offering your game to people? They're paying like five bucks and you're seeing none of it? No, they're not. Uh, your game is still being offered through whatever platform you've provided it through, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, uh, GOG, whatever. It's just people are able to actually play it in different locations than on their home computer or whatever their device might be. But uh, then, you know, there's the whole you bought it, you own it, which is their marketing slogan. And apparently Vice is going to call it a fancy marketing slogan uh, and on pen and paper it sounds great play all the games that you already own in practice it proven more complicated because of nvidia's approach no it's not it really is not the only one making it complicated at this point are game journalists developers who are insanely greedy and developers who have no idea what it is and think it's something akin to um xbox x cloud or Netflix or something to that nature. They they uh, honestly have no idea what this is. It's not more complicated than remote play. And remote play, it's not like it's a brand new system. It's not like it's never been done before. Um, for example, PlayStation, right? PlayStation has the PETA, the PETA. <laughs> PlayStation has PETA. Anyway, uh, PlayStation has the Vita and the PSP, which both offer some form of remote play from their systems that corresponded with it, whether it was the PS3 or the PS4. Um, you know, so it's not a new thing. And Steam also has a remote play function as well, which I think um, generally requires you to uh, um, be in the same network for it. So you can take it, and your PC, of course, has to be on and all this other stuff and just sort of projects, you know, the thing over you know remote plays it to your tv or whatever through whatever dongle it was that they had or something i don't really remember how that worked <laughs> but you know remote play really isn't a new thing but we have recently had some people innovating on the remote play thing with 
Xbox X Cloud, Stadia, and now GeForce Now, allowing it to be more easily accessible than normal. Um, you know, I was talking with a buddy earlier about that, and he was like, I have no idea how to even use Steam's remote play. I've tried it, but I never could get it to properly function, which is, you know, a lot of the things that there are, that's a lot of the reason why a lot of this remote play stuff never has worked in the past. Um, you know, it, it takes somebody who really digs in and figures out how to make it work to make it work, essentially. And it wasn't as easy as logging into an account and boom, there's your stuff. There's your library or whatever. You just pick and it boots up and it's good to go. Um, with this new system, of course, between these other three, GeForce Now, Stadia, and, uh, you know, xCloud, it is as easy as logging into your account and then boom, there's your library. Or whatever and you pick what you want to play and it boots up and you're good to go which is a service that is worth having um depending on your preferences of course and depending on your internet speeds and other things you know what may be a good way good thing for one person like for instance one person may find more satisfaction out of something like google stadia while another one might find more satisfaction out of playing something like a xCloud, meanwhile, say for myself, I would probably be more better off getting GeForce Now and using that because, you know, being able to play and continuing my progress using cloud saves and other things elsewhere is more up my speed than other things. But uh, unfortunately, since this whole thing has, uh, you know, launched and come out of beta not that long ago, several things have unfortunately gone not in its favor um with activision blizzard of course removing their stuff and we mentioned that earlier where they were banning players from using remote play they've changed their eula to reflect you're not allowed to use remote play um <clears throat> which is honestly a really anti-consumer when it comes down to it. it it really shows the greed of certain companies because you're essentially taking a s system that literally does nothing to you like, it does not take money out of your pocket whatsoever, right? And you're now denying other co consumers, other customers, the ability to play their games when they want to play them, unless they're sitting, you know, in this seat or something and have it booted up on their system when they could be, I don't know, engaging in World of Warcraft of their families or their friends or something like that, or playing Overwatch and, you know, possibly dipping into those loot boxes or something on the go. But, <laughs> obviously, that's not what they want. They, they, they somehow think that they're going to be losing money if more people have more access to their games. And on top of that, with a system like this, it makes some games way more accessible to other people because some people do have potatoes for computers and, you know, maybe running that game through a cloud service would make it actually playable for them. So they're more likely to buy it, purchase it, and, you know, play it. Uh, but then Bethesda Softworks also asked for all their stuff to be taken down with the exception of Wolfenstein Youngblood, which apparently is one of the worst games that they have produced in a while, uh, sales-wise anyway, it didn't do so good. But uh, when it comes to the whole Bethesda thing, we're also talking about the company that has Skyrim in 15 different locations simultaneously. You know, you can buy it on the 360, buy it on the Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PS4, the Switch, uh, the PC, multiple editions of it, of course. You know, you've got the, the Game of the Year editions, you've got the Special Edition, you've got all the expansions and all this other stuff. And, you know, they generally have that game everywhere because it has sold really well. It's done a lot and it's still being played today, thanks to modder, modders for the most part. Otherwise, that game probably would have died out. All of those Bethesda games probably would have died out and you know probably wouldn't get so much function if it wasn't for modding but then you also hear about capcom and square enix also taking a lot of their games out of the service which baffles me <laughs> because uh those two companies i kind of like still <laughs> it's 
especially Square Enix. Um, you know, granted they do do some things, but I it's one of those things that I wonder if it's just purely out of ignorance or, or is it really more greed oriented when it comes to those? Because those are the two Japanese companies in the mix who may not quite understand what's going on as well as the other developer, um, Raphael there. Um, you know, I, I don't think that maybe they quite understand what is going on. It's more like these journalists contacted and said, did you know that your game is available to stream? On GeForce now? <gasps> they didn't ask? What? When it's more like, hey, did you know that after purchasing your game that they could actually stream it to another computer using this system? That's kind of cool. They're more likely to buy your game that they couldn't run because they're streaming it through a virtual PC. But anyway, I do digress. Uh, I think we got one more thing I wanted to look at. But uh, apparently this is another tweet to Raphael, or from Raphael here. And it said, this was purely an oversight on NVIDIA's part. Remember that most customer-friendly thing you can do as a dev is run a sustainable business so that you can support your game and your customers into the future. Controlling your own content is key to that. <clears throat> and you're absolutely right. And there is nothing about GeForce now that prevents you from controlling your content. That's what I don't understand. Seriously, GeForce now doesn't sit there and sell your content without your knowledge to people. It doesn't allow them to pay for a subscription and have access to your content and you not see any of the profits or anything like that. No, it's they still buy it on Steam. They still buy your up they still get your updates through Steam. They still buy your DLCs through Steam. They just stream it from Steam using GeForce Now to that laptop over there or whatever it is that they're playing on. Their their phone or something. Another TV in the house. Or or you know, somewhere else. It's still not gonna change the fact that they still bought the game. However, the lack of said thing could deter somebody from not paying for the game. It, it could deter people from not buying the game because it's like, yeah, you know, I'd like to play this game, but I, I honestly can't run it. I don't have the specs. Oh, wait, I do have GeForce now, which means I could run it through there. I mean, it might be a little awkward to run your games through there, but it is possibility. Um, I mean, there had been games in the past that I had just completely skipped because at the time my rig was incapable of running them. But if I had an alternative way to run it through, say, a virtual PC using a streaming service, there's a good chance it would have been in my Steam library instead. And then when I did got a more powerful rig, like I do now, I could then play it on the rig without using said, you know, GeForce Now, but I could still take it elsewhere or I can show it off to a friend at their house or something, boot up, you know, my GeForce Now account and stuff and all that other stuff and say, dude, you've got to take a look at this. You've got to play this. Then they play it on my game, for, you know, on my thing for a few and they're like, you know what, I think I'm going to play this too or I'm going to get it. And then they decide to go download it. You know, they decide to pay for it. They buy it. That's another sell that you may not have actually gotten if I couldn't have shared the experience with them. But if you're going to bar your th games from being on the, the, the service, of course, I'm not going to be able to share it with them. Anyway, that's just food for thought. <laughs> oh, this thing has gone on long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up now. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Do you think all of this is purely developer greed? Do you think some of it might be purely developer ignorance because you know believe it or not we're not all that smart uh not even the developers or the doctors or the lawyers of the world there are aspects of this world that we don't know a lot about you know the developers may know how to make a fantastic game may not quite understand what a streaming service like geforce now actually is doing versus you know what they think it's doing it happens Anyway, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below, and I will talk to you later. See ya! Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, 
suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.